So the reason why we're using the Shark Tank head is because if I beat this with a Shark Tank head, gearless Moe's, we're going to be swimming in all that pussy. What's going on guys? B flat in here with a little bit of a different video this time This time I'm going to be doing gearless Moe's the entire point of the game is going to be going through the entire story of Borderlands 3 Entirely gearless no guns no weapons of any sort no grenade mods no class mods No shields no nothing just my bare hands vanilla grenades no badass rank or guardian rank i should say and just using my action skill this is going to be iron bear only mose so here when i took down shiv i ended up using a uh, a barrel kick that was the only way i was able to 1v1 him otherwise i was screwed so uh i had to figure out a lot of environmentalist ways to um get through the beginning part of the games here with mouthpiece I realized that I had to switch up my Iron Bear tactics. I couldn't just use the Vanquisher pods and run over him. I did end up using Vanquisher pods for this kill, but the uh, very first kill that I used was um, the rail guns. The rail guns actually helped with a lot of the bosses, as you'll probably see. Uh, I took out all of the mobbing parts of this uh, of this section. All the mobbing parts are done. This is going to be just the bosses that I've cleared so far in episode one. I think I made it up to like Eden 6 halfway through the game uh, when recording this. So there's a fair few bosses that are here. Now the reason why I'm doing this, the entire reason and purpose why I'm doing this, um, I named this character called Proven a Point. And what is the point that I'm exactly trying to get across? It's that Iron Bear is absolutely ridiculous. It is absolutely amazing. It's it's amazing in a broken way. Uh, since our latest patch that came in with DLC 3, I've noticed that Moe's is a little good. Now, I completely understand that people want to run around with an Iron Bear and not a Teddy Bear. And that's sort of what we had before was uh, Iron Bear was kind of useless. It's kind of hop into the bear, exit the bear. Um... It, it was hop in the bear, exit the bear, uh, just to, in, in order to proc, like, anointments, action skill, and anoints. Which is kind of shitty for an, for an action skill. But what we have now, is we have an iron bear. That can run over every single enemy, every single mob, every single boss. Completely gearless, it takes absolutely nothing to run over any of these bosses. Uh, it does millions of damage. It does millions upon millions of damage. And you need absolutely no gear for it. Hence why this uh, challenge run was born. Now I've never done a gearless run before. I've never done an absolute zero gearless run before. So I'm just relying off of Iron Bear and I'm relying off of um, action skill or uh, skill trees just to get through the entire game. One of the main things that I was using was Daka Bear. Uh, Daka Bear is very very nice because when you hop in Iron Bear... You can hop on the turret, and what the turret allows you to do is, um, if you get kills while in the turret, or if Iron Bear while you have Auto Bear is there, you gain a uh, cooldown for your Auto Bear. So what I can do is basically hop in the back of the turret. If I get two kills, I get my Iron Bear as soon as I leave the Iron Bear, which means I can basically hop in, kill two enemies on the back of the turret, hop out, get Iron Bear again, and mobbing is very, very easy. Here I was just talking about the rail guns and I ran over uh, Captain Trunt with the uh, with the rail guns. The rail guns were absolutely needed for uh, for Trunt. The Vanquisher pods were not working on his shields as well as I had hoped. Um, moving on to Katagawa Ball here, I ended up uh, using Vanquisher pods. Vanquisher pods worked pretty well against his shields, but not really so much against his armor. Uh, the entire clear was, uh, this was a first try clear, and I think I did it in one, uh, action skill, which goes back to the whole thing that I was saying earlier, that this is ridiculous. You can run over every single boss if you want in one action skill, um, and you can do it without having any gear, because gear doesn't boost, um, 
or gear doesn't make you overpowered. Gear can boost your 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 power, but uh, you can do it just by yourself. I was doing some recording and some number testing. If you're on Mayhem 10 and you have Vanquisher pods with Iron Bear without having any sort of boosts whatsoever, uh, each Vanquisher pod rocket can do about 28 million damage. Now, as you can see, when I'm using Vanquisher pods here, uh, there are six that come out on each side. So three on each, I should say. Um, 28 million times six is a lot of damage. There's not really an action skill that can do that. And if it does do that, it requires gear in order to get there. And there's no gear that's going through with, uh, with Iron Bear. Now, you can boost this even further if you wanted to, like I was mentioning. Um, Raging Bear comms. Raging Bear comms can boost this for sure, because you get more points into Stainless Steel Bear, and uh, just its passive ability whenever you take damage while in Iron Bear, you increase your damage. It can get pretty ridiculous. Now I know I'm going to get every single Moe's main in the comment section going, why would you want to nerf Iron Bear? Iron Bear was always in a bad place. I don't want to see Iron Bear nerfed necessarily. I don't want to see Iron Bear nerfed at all. Um, a call for a rebalance would actually be pretty cool. And by rebalance, what I mean is um, rebalance how some of the class mods work. So it would rebalancing how the class mods work would do uh, many beneficial things. You can get to the same level that Iron Bear is at right now with ease just by going via the class mod route. So say Rocketeer does more Vanquisher rocket damage. Um, Minesweeper Blastmaster does more railgun damage, for example. Um, balance it in the way that the way that you get your Iron Bear damage is is through the method of gear. Every other action still requires gear in order to do what it does. Um, Amara's ties that bind. You need a weapon. You need a good weapon in order to do all that damage. Uh, Zane's clone. You need to give him a weapon for him to do damage. Barrier, you need a weapon to have the amp damage. Uh, Flak, you need some sort of crit weapon to do well with fade away. Gamma burst, um, rack attack, etc. Every single, um, every single class, every single vault hunter needs some piece of gear in order to be as overpowered as they are. Um, and it's a loot shooter. What the point? What is the point of a loot shooter if you don't have to rely on loot? You just hop in your action skill, sneeze on everything like it's uh, uh, like it's COVID nineteen, and uh, you know the game is over. I think a rebalance would be really really cool. But like I said, nerfing Iron Bear is not the route. We kind of we we need Iron Bear to be powerful. Um, I would hate for Iron Bear to be seen as death trap in Borderlands two. Seeing Death Trap in Borderlands 2, uh, it was kind of sad to see. It was not really an action skill. It was kind of just there for show and for a distraction. And at most, it was there for the buck up glitch so that you can get your shields for speedruns. Other than that, it wasn't really used much. I'd hate to have a repeat of that. I'd hate uh, for history to repeat itself with poor gauge. But moving on, Katagawa Jr. here. Uh, Katagawa Jr. was actually a pain in the ass because I wasn't able to beat Katagawa Jr. with just one action skill. I needed multiple to get through this, so this was a very extended fight, and there was many, many times where I thought I was going to die. Um, because he would have his, like, clones chase me down. Uh, he would have his clones chase me, and, uh, the real one was sniping me from afar. It was kind of a hectic mess. Uh, so I thought this one was going to take a lot longer than I was going to. I was three levels under doing this as well. I'm only level 17, Katagawa Jr. is level 20. Uh, so I believe he has the skull next to his name, making it so that I do less damage. Uh, so this was a nightmare. I still did pretty decent despite all this uh, disadvantage against me. I, I know my camera is covering it up here during this live stream. Uh, session, but I was very low HP pretty much at all times. Uh, I didn't have Vampire at the time, and for those that don't know, Vampire, what it does is that in damage with Iron Bear or damage via grenade, uh, grenades, the grenade route, um, this gives you passive healing. 
to you as Moe's, not as the Iron Bear. So if I was an Iron Bear or if I was doing damage with any grenades, I would start healing. I didn't have Vampire at this time. Level 17 doesn't let you get down to Vampire. Um, so I was relying on just running around, um, hoping that I didn't get shot or die. See, I almost got shot there. <laughs> um, there's one of his clones chasing me, like I was saying. His clones kept on chasing me, and uh, I was getting sniped from afar. This was a very scary fight. Um, I honestly don't know how I did this. This was very panic-heavy, despite how calm I look here. Um, I couldn't utilize Dacabear either. I was unable to utilize Dacabear because there was no uh, ads. There was no ads in order to uh, to, to kill. The way that Dacabear works, like I mentioned earlier, is that you need Dacabear in order to get kills. If you don't get kills, uh, you don't uh, you don't get the action skill cooldown. And the way that I have it is that I have it on five second cooldown, so it is pretty ridiculous. Here I get the action skill, and as soon as I get the action skill, I gotta try to find the real one as soon as possible. There's the real one. Um, I find the real one one more time, and this fight is over. And uh, we can move on to the next boss fight. This was a first try clear, and I was actually very surprised. Uh, because I was underleveled once again. I was very, very surprised that uh, this was a first try clear. It was also kind of funny too, because I got a legendary drop here. And uh, I was kind of upset about that, because an early game first playthrough crossroads would have been very nice. The, the drop will appear right away. Um, there was a lot of times that I ran into gear that I couldn't use. There's the crossroads there. A lot of times there was a lot of gear I couldn't use, and uh, most of them were legendaries that were pretty good. Um, but thus is uh, the pains of gearless only challenge runs. So now we have Rampager. Now, Rampager was another one of those bosses that I thought was going to be very, very difficult. I thought it was going to be very, very tanky, and I thought it was going to be a big challenge. But then I realized that my break and the uh, opportunities that I had in order to beat this boss was whenever he goes into his immune phase, I leave Iron Bear immediately. And the reason why I do this is so that I can get some cooldown refunded to me while he's doing his immunity nuke phase and changing his, uh, his elements. This helped in a major, major way. So as you can see, he's already st he's like still doing his immune phase. Uh, I'm already halfway cooled uh, to my next uh, Iron Bear. Now there's also Guardians that spawn in this boss fight. Uh, I utilize those as well to try to get some cooldown just by killing them off. Sadly, I found out that killing the little uh, the little wisps that are there, um, they can revive you. But they don't refund you uh, cooldown to Iron Bear. And I noticed that very quickly. See, I tried to kill one uh, there. But unfortunately, there was no kill. There's no refund. Iron Bear is coming back so slowly. I'm always watching the ticker. And then they give me a notification that I have five seconds left. And we can enter Iron Bear again. I was actually very shocked that I was on level with this thing. I was like... Just barely a level under. See, I tried to use Dacabear here in order to get some cooldown and some uh, some refunded uh, some refunded cooldown here when the Guardians show up. So I killed one there, so I get some cooldown whenever I'm going to leave the Dacabear. And we leave the bear, and I almost have my cooldown just by killing one enemy. Just by leaving the bear and, and uh, killing one Guardian, I almost have my Iron Bear back again. That's how quick it is. If you have it maxed out at 5 out of 5, you can get it back pretty much instantly. And back into Iron Bear. Delete off, and we can leave our Iron Bear, and we have it almost cooled down again. We're already halfway through, just by firing once. Yeah, see, I still don't have Vampire here. But I'm showing off Grizzled here, because Grizzled is my action skill cooldown. I remember explaining this on the stream as to how it works. As soon as I get Grizzled and Explosive Punctuation, in one kill I can pretty much get my uh, action skills completely cooled down. 
There's Dakabear there in the green tree. Uh, that's doing all the... Um, that's doing all the leave there. See, I tried to blow out the wisps, but I don't... Uh, I can't kill them with grenades. And I can't melee them either for cooldown. I tried so hard there. <laughs> um, but Rampager was pretty easy, despite um, everything. Despite everything that went on with Rampager, everything was pretty easy. I thought this phase was going to kill me. This is the one phase that I was worried about the most, was uh, his, uh, his fire phase where he nukes the entire arena. But uh, entering Iron Bear here, it saved me. I thought I was going to go down, but uh, because of Iron Bear, Iron Bear saved the day with uh, all the armor bonuses. And when Rampager sits in the middle... We can just run it over with our Vanquisher pods. Now here I probably should have gone with Railguns. Railguns would have done a lot more damage. And Exit in Iron Bear, the Railguns would have been more accurate as well. But... Uh, we still did it regardless. Now he blew me up out of Iron Bear here. <laughs> he blew me up out of Iron Bear here, unfortunately. Uh, which means that I needed to run around for an entire action skill because I didn't get any kills outside of Iron Bear, so this was a full cooldown. Gladly, if you have Rampager up to this amount of HP, all he does is kind of just flop on the ground and he doesn't do anything because he's injured. Um, so I ran some laps around him. <laughs> ran some laps around him here. Got me some cooldown there with that... Uh, with that Wraith. I would have been so sad if I would have died here. With that amount of HP. I would have been so sad. That's why I got desperate just throwing nades at Rampager. Because I thought I was going to die. Those, uh, those Guardians, they hurt. They do some damage. Maya couldn't even finish off the Rampager. Dang it, Maya. Where's your cloud kill? <laughs> um... Oh, look at that. Echocast decided to show up there. Cool. Couldn't reach that uh, Guardian, so I just melee that one twice, and I get my uh, Iron Bear back in a couple seconds because of uh, how Grizzled works. Get it back, and that is the Rampager. Another stressful fight, I had to be honest with you. That was not the easiest fight of all time. But moving on, we're here to eat in six. We're moving on to the Warden. We're moving on to the Warden. Now the Warden was kind of an interesting fight because Warden has a lot of different immunity phases. Warden has a ton of immunity phases. So being able to time Iron Bear and all the immunity phases together was kind of a pain in the ass because I really needed to utilize Daka Bear here with all the, uh, the adds that he spawns. The other thing is that he blows up Iron Bear very, very quickly with all of his, uh, like, rocket spam and all of his, like, uh, his auto machine gun, whatever you want to call it. He does a lot of damage to Iron Bear, and it kicks me out very, very quickly. I need to play some hide-and-go-seek with him in order to, uh, kill him off. His armor phase was probably the most annoying. His HP phase was probably the easiest, because he has, like, no HP and there's no immunity phase with that. You see he has some adds charging me here. The auto bear is just going to nuke those guys off. Yeah, he blows up Iron Bear very quickly. I was in Daka Bear for maybe five seconds there, and I didn't get a full kill on that. Um, that was This was a very, very close death. I thought I was going to die there, but nope. Okay, back into Iron Bear, because we got that kill. He gets an immunity phase. He goes into his Raging Warden. And then we kind of just run him over. And that's the Warden. So this is as far as I got in Episode 1. I wanted to thank you guys for watching the video and enjoying this entire length of time with me. It really does mean the world and a half to me. I do have Episode 2 already recorded, and as of the time of this released video, I'm going to be uh, editing that as well. I'm going to be releasing it in a couple of days. It's a very, very good episode. You guys won't want to miss it. Um, and the recording of episode 3 is going to be done live on stream in a couple of days. So you won't want to miss that either if you want to catch these live and you want to catch these as soon as possible. 
Uh, you can see me streaming from Tuesdays to Saturdays at a 5.30 p.m. CST time. I'm doing all sorts of builds and uh, crazy shenanigans like these dearless runs on stream all the time. Make sure to come check it out, and I will see you guys in the next video, next live stream, whichever it may be. My name is B-Flatten, guys, and I'm signing on out of here. Take care.